like that there is this supply depot out in the middle of nowhere. This is the reason why a lot of players favor building another factory there. I personally prefer barracks factory wall offs. But um, look at this nice little response by Dayfly. He's going to be um, he's building Hellions. He's continuing to build Marines, and he already has a bunker all the way back here. He's building another supply depot um, back here. I mean, again, it's just for his normal supply, but its positioning allows it to be covered by this bunker pretty well. And then this is where Dayfly's starting to go, huh, I guess he's not attacking. And he's just going to surge forward with a bunch of factories, weirdly enough. Not another one, but he's actually going to be getting a third in just a moment. Pretty funky stuff. Um, but still, the same, same sort of basics that we're seeing. Um, feel free to get some Hellions before you get your tech lab up. That's what I'm seeing. Oh, look, there's the second factory going down. Ooh, excuse me. Oh, God, sorry. It's just that I'm so boring. Ugh. Just couldn't help but yawn. Jesus, wow, I'm just a total drag. Um, but yeah, you know, that same basic theme. Get some number of Hellions out. Sometimes zero, sometimes upwards of three. Um, but then get this tech lab up when you can um, when you can afford to stop making Hellions and get the pre-igniter upgrade. Uh, we do see that, there, that speed was done for Zpux, so... He was able to surround the Hellions. Not too much use can be done of those Hellions until he gets the blue flame upgrade. But a reactor coming out. Oh, how interesting. And of course we have another tech lab coming out on this one as well. And this is a very big one base play, obviously. Um, but sort of interesting how many similarities it has to the previous one. That we are getting this pre-igniter first before we do any sort of siege mode action. Um... Anytime you have a lot of these unit producing structures, it's so important to be getting double depot. You really do need to start uh, double depoting up in the early stages of the game. And it looks like he's prepping for almost the same push that he was doing in the first game. This Hellion uh, push with some Marines. Uh, still making Marines. Yeah, that's sort of cool to see. Look, there is a full bunker. There's a half full bunker and more Marines being produced. Still is going for this Hellion tank mix. But um, just getting a lot more Hellions. And yeah, look, same basic look to the other game. And here come this next round of tanks. The only difference is that Dayfly has a lot more factories and doesn't really look like he's going to be having any sort of big transition um, into an expansion. But uh-oh, because here's the part where Z-Pux... Remember how I said, oh my god, Z-Pux, he built that Banely Nest and quick tech to a layer. It's because he went for this Spire tech. Ooh, look at that Z-Pux hit it there. Really, you should be doing that 100% of the time, a Zerg hiding that Spire down there. But let's just note the situation that Dayfly was in. You'll notice that I sort of intentionally didn't look at that um, at that area. I didn't look into Z-Pux's main. Because, you know, it looks like Dayfly moving out here with a force. I wanted to do as much from Dayfly's perspective, so that way you could feel the same shock of, <gasps> Oh my god, Mutalisks! Well, it looks like that engineering bay was getting started really fast. And then let's look at some crisis management. Very, very important to have good crisis management. Because, honestly, I'm not going to lie. If there was a build that went Marine, Heli, and Tank, like Dayfly did, but if you got caught off guard with the Mutalisks, you lost... It would just kind of be a bad build. And this is this this funny misconception that a lot of players end up having. A funny misconception that a lot of players end up having is that they say, oh, look, it's rock, paper, scissors. Because if this happens, you win. If this happens, you lose. And blah, blah, blah. Look, I made a triangle. Rock, paper, scissors. And this is really what's happening. Um, there's a build that has a gigantic risk. And... Um, it's risky because if the opponent does X, you lose outright. And then the opponent does X, and the person loses outright. And then they go, oh, look, it's rock, paper, scissors. No, that's just risky. I mean, for instance, um, let's take a classic Brood War example. In Brood War, if I try to build my command center before I build my barracks, you know, do a 14 command center, that's a risky opening in Zerg vs. Terran. I mean, really, if your Zerg opponent goes for any sort of early pool you'll lose. And there are a lot of maps where it's reasonable to go for like a 9 pool into expansion. Um, not 9 pool with gas, but you know, to still get early lings and go into an expansion. Very reasonable to do that. So you know, why not? <laughs> um, 
why not call rock, paper, scissors on that matchup series? Well, because it's not. It's just risky. And be very wary of yourself whenever you feel yourself going, well, if a 9 pool beats a 14 command center, and a 14 command center seems to beat a 2 hatch mutalisk, and a 2 hatch mutalisk loses to a normal sort of expand, but that normal expand also defeats the, oh my god, it's kind of a square, it's rock, paper, scissors. It's just not. It, there's, it, there are risky things. Risky. It's just, it's just risky. It's just risky. So, if, for instance, there was a mech push, or actually, I want to go so far as to say, um, perhaps it's not even risky, perhaps it's just unstable. Perhaps it's just really, really, really good against a limited set of things. So, here is the, the classic StarCraft II example of this, the Marauder, that everyone was just like, oh, imbalance, worst unit in the game, and people, oh, it really should have... 20 hit points and do 2 damage and that'll be fair um, because in the early Terran vs. Protoss days, Terrans literally would go oh, expand 6 barracks with tech labs, mass marauder alright, that's my build, gonna win every time, and Protoss players struggled for quite a while with that but um, eventually Protoss has figured out how to you know, use zealots and sentries to force field appropriately. They learn to macro and actually have units. They learn to make immortals at good times. And this became not an issue at all. In fact, in some circumstances, if you just made a lot of marauders, Protoss players would be like, yippee, and they would just crush your face into oblivion. And um, so nowadays, if you, if you whenever I'm watching a player suddenly get five barracks and go mass marauder, I look at that and go, ugh, that's a little bit unstable. It works well against a, a limited set of things, but against too much, it's very, very weak. So you want to make sure that your builds have stability to them, um, that they can deal with a, a good variety at the time being, and also that they're flexible enough to bend to, um, bend to the appropriate defense when necessary. Um, and this is something that I would call crisis management right here. In the midst of a crisis, can you deal with this sort of stuff adequately? So we can see, all right, well, with this marine count right now, it buys a little bit of time for Dayfly. He's able to get a reasonable amount of stuff up because, you know, this is a one hatchery mutalisk play. Not a ton of mutalisks are going to be coming out, but some. So these marines really seem like a time buyer. Yeah, they can be thrown into the bunkers, and sure, they're great at dealing with the roaches. Um, in, comp in combination with the tanks, and they're good at dealing with Zerglings in combination with the Hellions, but right here they seem like this unit that is also good at just buying time to get these missile turrets up. And suddenly, Terran's safe, he's okay, he hasn't really lost that many um, SCVs, he's lost a few, but you know, these Marines, this is something that I skipped over in my experience trying to do these early push styles. And I actually see a lot of players skip over these Marines. Um, but I'm starting to see more and more that, yeah, they allow for flexibility. They allow for a little bit more aggression early on that I can put into these bunkers. They're pretty important to the early part of this story, to the early part of this build. And oh wow, you can get a reactor on that barracks. I'm curious about that one. But uh, you know, Dayfly pulls back, just gets his Thors up. Will he be making a second Thor? Yeah, cool. And he's able to produce a pretty gigantic army, and even as blue flames on his Hellions, adequately, uh, you know, burning through big numbers of Zerglings. But wow, yeah, z -Pucks, as we can see, did an okay job keeping up with his opponent in food. But, you know, once we get these two Thors up, I mean, look at everything just get roasted to all hell. The Hellions in the front, the Marines in the back. Interestingly, the Marines... Critical port, uh, critical port, ah, critical port, the critical part of this force, um, because they uh, did a little bit of extra damage to these mutalists. Naked Thor is pretty weak against um, just mutalists, but as we can see, thanks to the fact that those mutalists had a few extra shots, a nice little effective push by Dayfly. Didn't really appear to have any intention of getting an expansion anytime soon, um, but you know, again. Notice that this push looks very similar to the push that ended the game in the previous match on Blistering Sands. Um, just cool sort of consistencies lining up. And I'm seeing again how critical those Marines were to the success of him staying alive. <clears throat> mm. So, um, 
I would be delighted to take a few questions, but I am just uh, I'm a little I'm a little sleepy. <laughs> Again, exercise demolished my ability to maintain consciousness for more than eight hours today. Ha. So, um, Kadokan says, Day 9, if you spot mech coming, do you think spending your first 100 gas on roaches instead of link speed is a good idea? Especially if roaches are your mid-game plan. I actually played a game against Zelnik with a Q at the end, um, where I did do this early push, skimmed back on the marines, and Zelnik did almost exactly that. He just got a good number of roaches early on, and then transitioned into roaches in the mid-game, and I was way behind.